rational inequalities. Example. Well, here we have a rational function. And what we're asking is, when is this function greater than or equal to 0? Well, thinking about this, we really want to know when it is 0, because that's part of the answer. And step 1 is find all x values that make the rational function. Uh, f of x equals this rational uh, expression, zero or undefined, okay? It is because um, wherever this thing is zero or whether wherever it's undefined are the places where this can change sign and go from positive to negative or negative to positive. So we have to check each one of those regions. And uh, in particular, we have to know where it is zero because that's part of the answer, right? Greater than or equal to zero. So the first step is we... Uh, <clears throat> we take the top, whatever makes the top of a, the, the uh, numerator of a rational expression equal zero will make the whole rational expression equal zero. So whatever x's make this top zero will make the uh, whole expression zero. So we set this to zero and we get factors. Uh, we don't have to use the quadratic formula. That's because I'm lazy. I always make them factor. And I get, uh, of course, 2x plus 4 equals zero. 2x equals negative 2 and x equals 7, positive 7. And then um, <clears throat> setting x to 0 makes the rational function undefined. It's 0. Whatever makes the bottom 0 will make it undefined, and that is x equals 0. So we have these three numbers where there could be turning points in the signs of this function, uh, negative 2, 7, and 0. These are the ones to consider, those underlying points. <clears throat> So we uh, get a number line out. And what we're going to do is we're going to plug some number in this region. And that's what the uh, sign of the function is going to be. Say if it were positive, that means it's uh, greater than 0, right? If it's negative, it's less than 0. So we would take a number like maybe negative 3, a representative number from this uh, uh, region, and plug it into the function. Then I'd probably put in the number uh, negative 1 and then maybe positive 1. Those are three easy numbers, and maybe 8, because we have to check 1, 2, 3, 4 regions for signs. And that's what I do in this next step here. Here they all are. I use, I guess I use negative 3, because um, uh, that's less than negative 2. <clears throat> and I use negative 1 and 1 and 8. And I got positive, negative, negative, and positive. Notice you don't have to really evaluate the functions at these points. You just have to determine what the sign is just using a little bit of logic, what it has to be. You might stop that and make sure the movie right here and make sure that everything is true there, and it is true, and so you understand it. Okay, so we have to get out our number line again, and uh, when we uh, plug in, we, remember it was positive, negative, negative, and positive. So those gives us the sign of the regions. When we put in negative 3, we got positive, and uh, I think negative 1, we got negative, and 1, we got negative, and then uh, 8, and got positive. So this pretty much sums up the whole thing. Uh, first of all, it looks like uh, we want to know when it's positive or 0, this whole function. So I guess if it's less than or equal to negative 2, if it equals negative 2, it'll be 0. And if it's less than negative 2, it'll be positive. So less than or equal to negative 2. And uh, greater than or equal to 7. So here's our answers. x is less than or equal to negative 2, or x is greater than or equal to 7. And putting any numbers in, in those regions, less than negative 2 and greater than 7, will give you a positive expression here, or 0.